All right, topic four, this video is gonna be inscribed angles. Uh, our essential question is gonna be, what are the properties of these inscribed angles and how are their measures determined? All right, a little background information back with our guy Euclid, the father of geometry. Um, he continued to investigate angles and arcs found inside circles. Uh, he began to look closer at inscribed angles. Now, if you remember from last time, uh, inscribed angles are going to be angles with their vertex on the circle. Um, and here's what the inscribed angle theorem says. It says the measure of an inscribed angle is equal to half the measure of its intercepted arc. So, for instance, if this angle is, let's say it's 40 degrees, then this arc will be 80 degrees. Uh, two different ways to kind of set up equations to solve these things. Um, we could say in this next diagram here that the measure of angle one is equal to one half the measure of arc AB, right? If that's, that's easy to calculate, then that is certainly one way of uh, setting up an equation with the angle. Or we could say that the measure of the arc is equal to the two times the measure of angle one. So we could say two times the angle equals the arc, or we could say that the angle is equal to one half of the arc. So two different ways of kind of setting up these equations. Uh, sometimes we'll do it one way, sometimes we'll do it the other way, depending on just which way is easier. Uh, let's solve some equations here. So uh, example one here says solve for x. Uh, it looks like x is the arc this time, right? So I think the best way of doing this would be to say that x is equal to two times the angle, right? Two times the angle equals the arc. So in this case, that would be 126. This angle would be 100, or this arc would be 126 degrees. Um, this one, x is the angle, right? That's the angle. This is the arc. So let's go ahead and say that x is equal to one half of the arc, right? Which would give us 41. Um, and then finally, we got this one. Looks like we've got some... X is in both places this time. This time. So in this case, I think the best way of doing it would be t two times the angle equals the arc, or that the arc, so arc equals two times angle. All right, so we're, we're still using that, that second equation. The measure of the arc is equal to two times the measure of the angle. Now this time we are gonna to have to distribute. So that'd be four X plus 44. If I subtract the four X, I'm gonna be left with three X plus 11 equals 44. If I subtract the 11, I get three X is equal to 33. So X is 11. Um, let's plug it back in, check to make sure. If I plug it back in, um, 2 times 11 is 22, plus 22 is 44. And then 7 times 11 is 77, plus 11 is 88. So that gets a check mark for there because it does show that the angle is half the arc. All right. So in all cases, angle is half the arc or arc is double the angle. Let's go to the inside and see a few more properties. Um, this says Euclid eventually proved a few other theorems involving or regarding inscribed angles. Um, this one is the corollary to the inscribed angle theorem. It says if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then they are congruent. So that's gonna look like this. Like let's say we got this arc over here and let's say that that arc is uh, 80 degrees. Then if I have an inscribed angle over here, obviously that is going to be 40 degrees. But if I draw an inscribed angle going this way, 
that angle will also have to be 40 degrees. So what we can see is this angle opens up this way, and this angle intercepts this same arc. So both of those angles would need to be congruent because they're both gonna be half of that same arc. Um, and remember, corollary just means the addition. Uh, so it's an addition to what we already know. Um, the intercepted semicircle theorem, this says if an inscribed angle intercepts a semi semicircle, then it is a right angle. So we know that a semicircle is just a, um, an arc that is exactly 180 degrees, right? So if we take that arc and we draw an inscribed angle to it, that inscribed angle has to be 90 degrees, right? Why? Because it's gotta be half of 180. Inscribed angles are always half of their arc and half of 180 is 90. So any inscribed angle that opens up to a semicircle has to be 90 degrees. And then lastly, this says if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. So let's go ahead and make a quadrilateral out of inscribed angles. So in this case, what we would know is that those opposite angles are supplementary. So something like this, like maybe this is 110 and this is 70, right? These opposite angles have to be supplementary. Um, we could also do it with the, the other ones there. So maybe this is, uh, oops, not like that. Maybe this one's 95 and this one's 85. So opposite angles have to be supplementary if we have a quadrilateral that is made of inscribed angles or an inscribed quadrilateral. Okay, so with those in mind, let's see if we can solve some problems. So example four says solve for x, um, check this out. So this two x plus 15, if I follow that angle out, it opens up over here, right? If I follow this angle out, the one with the four x minus 15, that angle intercepts the same arc. So I've got two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc and the corollary to the inscribed angle theorem says that those angles must be congruent. They've got to be equal to each other. So subtract the 2x, I get 2x minus 15 is equal to 15. Add the 15 over, I get 2x is equal to 30. Divide, and x is 15. If I plug those back in, 2 times 15 is 30, plus 15 is 45. And then four times 15 is 60, minus 15 is 45. So they're equal, so that's good. Um, now at the same time, if those angles are both 45 degrees, that does mean that this has to be uh, 90 degrees. Fun fact, it doesn't look like it is, but not all diagrams are drawn to scale. Um, this one says solve for X and find the measure of arc C, D, E. Okay, well, this is a, a case of what we were looking at at the last one, where we've got these opposite angles, right? These opposite angles in an inscribed quadrilateral. And we said in, an encase, in a case like that, those opposite angles have to be supplementary. So that would be 18x plus 18 is equal to 180. That'd be 18x is equal to 162. And if we divide, we're going to get uh, 9. So x is equal to 9. So that's step 1. Let's plug that back in, make sure that that works. 10 times 9 is 90, plus 9 is 99. And then 8 times 9 is 72, 
plus 9 is 81. Uh, that does add up to 180, so that's good. Now let's find arc C, D, E. C, D, E. Now that arc is the arc that this angle intercepts. So 2 times 99 is 198. So we'll say that the measure of arc CDE is equal to 198. If we did it going the other way, if we followed this angle to this arc, 2 times 81 is 162. And 198 plus 162 does equal 360, so everything's groovy. Everything's good. Cool. Let's check out these last ones here. Example 6 says solve for x. This is interesting. My eye immediately goes to this inscribed angle, which is 5x. And we should know that that angle is equal to half this arc, or 2 times that angle is equal to the arc. So if that angle is 5x, I could say that this arc must be 10x, right? Because it's got to be double it. Then, what could I do? Well, now at this point, I have expressions that represent the entirety of the circle. And I should know that the entirety of the circle has to be 360 degrees. So this can be an equation that I could set up to solve. Um, that's going to give me 19x, right? 10 plus 3 plus 6 plus 18 is equal to 360. If I subtract the 18, I get 342. So let's give that a try. 342 divided by 19 is 18. So x is 18. Plug that back in and make sure that that works. If that's 18, this is 180. Um, 6 times 18 is 108. And 3 times 18 plus 18 is 72. And 180, 108, 72, that does equal 360, so that's a check. Um, and 5 times 18 would be 90, so that looks good to me. Now, interestingly enough, if that's 180, that does mean that this is a diameter. Pretty cool. Um, Solfrax. Okay, speaking of diameters, we do have a diameter right here. Uh, that diameter does make this 180 degrees, which means that this is the intercepted diameter theorem, where that 8x plus 2 has to be equal to 90, right? Because if this is 180, that angle's got to be half of it, so that's got to be 90. Subtract the 2, I get 8x is equal to 88, and uh, x is 11. Plug back in just to make sure. 8 times 11 is 88, plus 2 is 90. Looks good to me. Um, this last one wants us to solve for x, y, and z. Okay, well, where's x? Let me start there. x is here. And that means that this inscribed angle has to be half of it. Right? So I could say that x should be equal to 2 times 25, which means that x is 50. Now, what can we do? Hmm. Well, where's y going? Y's over here, and if I follow y, y opens up to z. But I don't know what Z is. Interesting. 
what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to look at uh, this little triangle right here. Now, I know what two of those angles are. I know the 110 and the 25. If I add those together, I get 135. And the triangle sum theorem says that all three angles have to add up to be 180. So let me subtract that, and I'm going to get 45. So this angle is 45. Now, that angle also happens to open up to Z, right? It is also an inscribed angle that intercepts arc CD, just like the angle where Y is. So that means that Z has to be equal to 2 times 45, which would be 90. And if this arc is 90, then Y has to be one half of 90, which would be 45. Because it too intercepts that same arc. And we know that inscribed angles that intercept the same arc have to be congruent. So that's gotta be the same as that 45 that we found. Cool problem. All right, um, I believe it is your turn to try some things out. You got a wacky diagram to start off with that you're gonna try to figure out what W, X, Y, and Z are. A lot, uh, lot of inscribed angles in that diagram and even one central angle. Um, then you've got some ones that you're going to try to try to solve with. So give all that a shot. If this diagram looks a little too tricky for you to start off with, then start with some of the other ones, see if you can solve some equations, and then come back and um, check to see how you did by continuing with the video. All right, uh, right away on number one here, we should have said that x was just 94. Um, because central angles are always the exact same as the arc that they intercept. So if this is a central angle, then that angle is just 94, or that arc's 94 degrees. Then if I check out where y is, y is an inscribed angle looking at that 94. So y should be one half of 94, which is 47. That's not true. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no. Yeah, that is right. I'm crazy. I'm down on myself. Uh, Why is 47? Um, now, what about Z? Looks like Z is an inscribed angle going this way. So Z should be one half of 104, which means that Z is 52. And then what about W? W is an inscribed angle going this way. So it should be half of AB. I don't really know what AB is right now. Oh, but I do know what the entire circle is. Right, if I add up the 100, the 106, and the 94, that gives me 300. And if the whole circle is 360, subtract the 300 to get 60. So that's what arc AB is. So that means that W must be half of 60, which means that W is 30. Cool problem. Um, what do we got for number two here? A little inscribed angle action. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. The arc for x plus 10 is equal to uh, two times the angle. Oops. Two times the angle, which means that 10x plus 10 is equal to 130. So 10x is equal to 120. So x is 12. Um, for this one, we just got two inscribed angles opening up to the same arc. So we should just set them equal to each other. So 4x is 24. So x should just be 6 on this one. And then this one, well, if that 
arc is 140. This arc should be 40, right? Since this thing is a semicircle. So then I should be able to say that 2 times 2x, or I'm sorry, let me try that one more time. Let's do that the angle, I'm sorry, the arc is equal to 2 times the angle. So that'd be 40 is equal to 6x plus 14. I subtract the 14, I get um, 26 is equal to 6x. And that's not going to be a nice number, is it? Uh, what would that round to be? Let's see. 26 divided by 6. It's like about 4.3. Okay. And this last one, we've got the uh, opposite angles inside a quadrilateral. Let's go ahead and add those up. And set them equal to 180. So that'd be 17x plus 10 is equal to 180. That'd be 17x is equal to 170. So x should be 10. All right, hopefully that went well for you. And um, that's going to wrap up this video.